This is the second video showing how to use verified permissions with Amazon Cognito to authenticate and authorize user access to APIs hosted on API Gateway. I'm Julian Lovelock, and I'm the product manager for Amazon Verified Permissions. The API Gateway Quick Start Wizard is a great way to bootstrap your application and generate the schema and policies in AVP. It gets you started with the most common policy type, role-based access control. In the first video, we used the wizard to create CEDA policies for each group within a Cognito user pool. The policies determined which of the APIs hosted on API Gateway members of the group were permitted to call. Those APIs were represented as actions in the CEDA schema. If you haven't already watched that video, then it's definitely worth taking the 18 minutes and 12 seconds to do so, as we will be building on many of the concepts we introduced there. In this video, you will learn how to augment the role-based access control, or RBAC, policies generated by Quick Start to add attribute-based conditions, or ABAC. So let's pick up where we left off. I'm using Postman to submit requests initially to Cognito in order to get an ID and an access token. And in the prior video, I showed you how to set up Cognito to do this. So when I click send, what I get back is an access token and an ID token. And in this video, we're going to focus on using the ID token because it comes with the attributes that I want to use to qualify the permissions. Now I'm going to take this ID token and I'm going to copy it into a useful little site called JWTMS, and that's going to decode the token for me. And if we look at the contents of that token, we can see that it is a token for Julian, and Julian is a member of the Cognito Group employee. And we also have a custom attribute called position, which we'll get to using later. Just one little thing to be aware of to make sure those attributes, in particular the custom attributes, are coming back in your ID token. When you set up your Cognito user pool, make sure when you create the app integration app client, you have the authorization code grant enabled and also within the rewrite permissions that for any custom attributes that you want to come back within the ID token you have the read and the write selected. Now let's create a policy store for the policies that are going to govern access to my APIs and again we did this in fair amount of detail in the first video so I'm going to run through it fairly quickly. I'm going to select this as my setup option, click next, pick my pet store API and my deployment stage, import my APIs, go next, pick my policy, not my policy store, my uh, user pool. And note this time I'm going to use the identity token, not the access token. Um, that user pool has a single group called employees. I'm going to say that anyone in the employee group can call all of my APIs, click next, and create my policy store. And I can watch that deploy. So once the authorizer has deployed, I then come back into API Gateway, and I attach that authorizer to each of my APIs. And I've already attached it to the other APIs. Uh, and now I'll do the last one, which is attaching it to the pets post API. Select my authorizer, save, and deploy my API back to my pet store dev stage. One small point worthy of note is that by default, API Gateway enables authorization caching. Uh, 120 seconds, which basically means that you'll have to wait two minutes before any changes that you make in your policies impact the authorization decisions. 
and I can check that this is all working as expected by coming back, grabbing my ID token for Julian, who, as we know, is an employee, coming across into Postman, copying that token into the request to call the Pet Store API to post pets, hearing send, and the response that I get indicates that yes, I am permitted to make that API call. Okay, so far, so good, so what? Everything we've covered thus far, we covered in the first video. The only difference being this time we're using an ID token. But what I want to now show you is how do I update my policies to be able to reference that custom attribute. So firstly, when I created that policy store in the first place, we created a schema. So let's just go take a look at that quickly. We can see that within that schema, as part of the definition of the user entity type, because I referenced an ID token, all of the attributes from that user pool were created as attributes of this entity type user, including our custom position attribute. So I can now reference that attribute within my policy. So let's come across into the policies and edit my policies. So the wizard created a single policy for me, which essentially says any user who is part of the employee group can call any of these APIs. But I want to carve out one of these APIs and limit it to users who are not only in the employee group, but also have the manager position. How do I do that? Well, I split this into two policies. I'm going to remove, I'm going to copy the policy for simplicity, I'm going to remove the post pets action from this general policy, which applies to anyone who is an employee. And I'm going to create a second policy that is specific to post pets action. And that policy says that any user who is an employee can call post pets API if I when they have a custom attribute with a value for position, and the value of that position is manager. In other words, this policy says that only managers can call post pets APIs. Well, to be pedantic, it doesn't say that only managers can call post pets APIs, because it's not aware as to whether there might be another policy out there. But what it does know is that managers can call post pets API. If we now come back to Postman and resubmit our API call request on behalf of Julian, who remember is an assistant, not a manager, now that request is blocked because Julian's the value for Julian for that attribute of position is assistant. But I got great news for Julian. He is about to get a promotion. It's pretty exciting. So let's go promote Julian. And we'll do that by going into Cognito and changing the value of his position attribute. It really is as easy as that to get a promotion. So I'm going to edit custom position and set that to manager. Congratulations, Julian. Very well deserved. Now I'm going to come back into Postman and resubmit my login request, and that's going to return a new ID token. And when I look at this ID token, I would expect to see the new attribute of manager reflected in the claims. And sure enough, Julian is now a manager. 
So if I now use this ID token to submit a request to call the PostPets API, sure enough, now Julian has access to the PostPets API in his lofty position as a manager. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch it. Hopefully it was instructive. Just as a little recap of what we did, we showed today how you can, from within Amazon Verified Permissions, deploy a Lambda authorizer into API Gateway, which will call the Amazon Verified Permissions Policy Store to evaluate a set of policies to determine whether a user is permitted to make a call on a specific API. And we showed how you can modify that policy to consider not just the group membership of the user, but also attribute values for that user. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll do more videos and you'll tune in to watch those. Goodbye.